Hi, I'm Janaina and I am Project Manager and Solutions Architect at NewNet. Next month marks my two-year anniversary at NewNet and I have high expectations for the impactful work we are doing here. With a master's degree in computer science and more than two decades of experience, I have contributed to launch new software and hardware products in the telecommunications and energy sectors. My primary aim here at NuNet is to facilitate the launch of our decentralized platform, offering numerous potential use cases on top of it. Today, I'd like to share about two methodologies we are using at NuNet to assist us in organizing our projects, structuring our roadmaps, allocating resources, executing tasks, and ultimately achieving our objectives. The first methodology is Kanban. This approach is used by Agile teams to better visualize workflows and project progress while reducing the likelihood of bottlenecks. At NewNet, we use this Kanban board and it's in our GitLab space and public. Here, you can see tasks in the backlog. Tasks that the team is currently working on and tasks in review. The column on hold help us to see the bottlenecks so that we can prioritize unblocking them. At NuNet, we also implement the critical chain project management. This methodology involves planning projects by account the actual capacity of resource and direct team management focus toward critical aspects. A critical chain is the longest sequence of tasks taking into account the logical sequence and the resource availability. The critical chain determines the project duration. Before present the CCPM diagrams that we are using in NUNET, I'd like to share NUNET's roadmap for this year and beginning of the next. Here, our planet milestones. DMS architecture update and refactoring, public alpha solutions, decentralized SPO computing, public alpha mainnet, public beta mainnet. I will not explain in detail, but here you can see the overall idea of each one. DMS is NuNet's main decentralized component, and we are refactoring it to better accommodate the needs we saw necessary to achieve the roadmap for 2024. In decentralized SPO computing, NuNet will enable SPOs to run computing workflows on community provision hardware, increasing resilience and aiding decentralization on Cardano. We have two public releases. In the solutions, we will build a decentralized deployment layer to run workflows integrated into NTX ecosystem without crypto micropayment layer. In the mainnet, we will add the crypto micropayment layer and we will use more device types to run the workflows. The beta version is planned for 2025. Returning to the CPCPM methodology, I'd like to share some diagrams that are accessible on NuNet's GitBook space. On the left side, you will find a list of milestones. Clicking on any milestone will lead you to a page with links. Here, we have a link to the milestone page in GitLab that shows the deliverables expected to this milestone. Additionally, we have all four 
diagrams showing the work packages and the dependence between them. In blue, we are representing the work packages and a work package is a collection of related tasks with defined deliverables that are part of an overall milestone. For the DMS architecture and refactoring, we need to design and implement some packages as the orchestrator package, job package, storage package, network, telemetry, and so on. For designing the, this orchestrator package, we did some research to get insights and understand the literature around scheduling orchestration of jobs when outsourcing computing. So we created this work package, Job Orchestration, to deal with that research. As I said, a work package is a collection of related tasks. So clicking in a work package, we can see the tasks associated with it and the state according to Kanban. Here, backlog, doing, review. The remaining duration of a task in backlog is actually the estimated duration for implementing that task. And this estimation is done considering perfect conditions. Okay, in CCPN methodology, we call this a focus duration. The remaining duration for a task in doing or in review is the remaining days we saw necessary to finish implementing that task. The scope buffer is created to deal with uncertainty. For instance, if we need to create another task inside this work package, here in the scope buffer, we are saving days. So if we need to create a new task, we use these days for implementing that tasks. Finally, the remaining duration in a, in a work package is the CCPM ETTC. ETTC is the earliest time to completion and it's calculated considering the resource constraint and the sequence of tasks. Here we can see that the same person is doing the tasks inside this work package. So for calculating the remaining duration in the work package, that is the ETTC, we need to sum the remaining duration of each task. We didn't count review uh, because the, the review will be done by another person, so it can be done in parallel. So uh, the remaining duration for the work package will be three plus two, plus two and plus three days here in the scope buffer. So 10 remaining days. Clicking on a work package, you go to the work package page in GitLab and can see the defined deliverables and the tasks to implement it. Here, the tasks to implement it. It's the same tasks that are shown here and if you click in and off then you will see a GitLab page for that task containing a detailed description about that task. Finally, I want to talk about the Gantt chart and the Fever chart in CCPM. We are working on automating the generation of these two charts, but since we haven't finished yet, I added here charts that we were manually generated for another project last year. 
we use three Kent chart views. One with all the work packages. One with only the work packages in the critical chain. And a simplified one showing the project buffer at the end of the project. Remember that we used focus duration while estimating task duration, and they don't take into account the probable problems during execution. So, the CCPM methodology inserts a project buffer at the end of the project, as shown here. The project due date is therefore the end date of the project buffer, in this case, April 22. The CCPM uses a simple visual indicator called the fever chart. The fever chart is built by measuring the progress of the project. Uh, I mean, the percentage of achievement of the critical chain and the consumption of the project buffer. This uh, figure was obtained from a Mary's consulting article and represents a six-week project that was monitored on a weekly basis. At the end of the first week, under 20% of critical chain was completed with approximately 15% of project buffer consumed. Since it falls within the green zone, the project completion date is not in danger and no specific action is required. At the end of the second week, we see that the project is in the yellow zone. This indicates that the project buffer has been consumed too quickly compared to the task progress. At this point, corrective actions should be considered. Between week 3 and week 4, there is no progress on the critical chain and the project buffer has been heavily consumed. This situation needs a fast intervention to avoid compromising the project completion date. The next curve shows that the situation has been brought back under control and the project ultimately finished with a slight advance in week 6. According to the CCPM, to ensure that all projects are completed on time, they must be finished ahead of schedule. The critical chain approach is also used to manage project portfolios. We can create a fever chart containing all the projects because the two axes are calculated in percentages, so we can have projects with different scales altogether. This project portfolio fever chart helps manage the projects considering priorities. In this example, we have nine projects and project P2 needs urgent corrective actions and project P5 needs attention. That's all for now. I've given a brief overview of how we manage projects at NUNET using Kanban and CCPN methodologies. Feel free to explore our work package in the technical dependence diagrams I have shown to see our current progress, planned tasks and deliverables. Thank you for your interest in our projects. Goodbye.